Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to a modern RPG. And this time I'm going to be covering Foes and Factions. Dossiers from the Front, a source book for the Carbon Grey role-playing game. Now I got this as part of my Kickstarter bundle. Um, it's available to download if you backed it on Kickstarter. Or it's being sold as a separate book on Drive-Thru RPG. So you can pick it up that way if you've got the Carbon Grey role-playing book. Now it's a source book which adds some foes, some factions, a bunch of NPCs, just things to help flesh out your Carbon Grey campaign. It is quite a good book, we'll have a look through it in a second. But first thing I'd like to address some stuff from my last Carbon Grey video. Because when I'm recording this, it's the day after that video has come out, and there's a whole load of comments being put on that video about my complaint about the Kickstarter itself. Now in that video I complained um, that I wasn't happy about the way they'd run the Kickstarter. Basically, after the Kickstarter had finished, when the books were about to ship, they contacted me and asked me for postage on top of it. And that's the first time that's ever happened to me on a Kickstarter. Now, lots of people are saying that's how it's done these days, and I can kind of understand that, but that still puts me off. Um funding things on Kickstarter, because it's just extra cost that's being added at the end, and it's kind of a random amount. Now, I've, bought, I've backed a whole load of Kickstarters in the past, and I understand that postage and shipping has really gone up, especially through the pandemic. That's totally messed up the supply chain, we've all known about this, we've had empty shop shelves, all that kind of stuff. And shipping costs are absolutely through the roof. So I can understand people having problems with that. But two Kickstarters I backed, which have shipped during the pandemic, two have backed it, have sorted it out in their own unique way. One was a role-playing game. And what they did was, we agreed to ship you it for the cost, but we're trying to make some of that back. So what we're doing is we're offering you this PDF of an adventure if you want to pay the shipping costs. And basically they were giving a free adventure away if you backed it. And an adventure for a game that I'm just getting, fantastic. I want adventures. I want to know what kind of style I'm going to be running games in. So getting a free adventure or paying the shipping to get the adventure, absolutely thumbs up from me. I did that. Another one was a DVD. Um, a guy I follow on YouTube, he'd made a film and it shipped during the pandemic. Now he got in contact with all his backers saying shipping's through the roof. This is going to cost a lot more. However, if you'd like me to autograph your copies, then just offer the uh, just pay this amount, which will help cover my shipping. And again, I was only too happy to. I was getting something for my money. And I've got a feeling Carbon Grey, or I've got a feeling role-playing uh, Kickstarters really should try that. Include the base cost, but if it works out to be more, then offer your people more. Don't just go... Now nah, we need some more money, thanks. Now, it's been pointed out I didn't notice the section on the Kickstarter which said that shipping would be added afterwards. Hands up to that, I didn't notice it because it wasn't something I was expecting to see. I'd never ha had it before. It's like if I went into a shop every day and bought a chocolate bar and then one day after I bought loads and loads of chocolate bars, I'm walking out the door with my chocolate bar that I've just bought and they stop me at the door and say, no, you've got to pay more if you actually want to leave with that. I complain about it and they go, oh, there's a label on the shelf which tells you that. But you've paid already now, so ha, tough. It really feels like a slap in the face. If this is the way things are being done normally, I'm stopping backing Kickstarters, especially for all playing games. I'll still back ones for people that I know and trust, um, people I've backed in the past. But I don't think I'm going to risk it on other ones. Perhaps it's hurt me more with Carbon Grey, just the way it hit. Um, I'm self-employed. I run my own company, so money can come in and go. And the time they hit me for the shipping fees, I was watching every penny because I was waiting for clients to pay. And I was very short of money. Now, I backed them when I'd had a lot of money and I didn't mind paying out all that. 
but then this little bit extra. And I'm going, well, that's food for a day or two. When money's tight, money's tight. And confronting somebody with that six months, a year after the back to Kickstarter, that's what annoyed me. But anyway, enough of that. I don't think they broke any rules. I just wasn't happy about that. I think it was a little underhanded and there were better ways of handling it. On to this book. <laughs> Finally. Skip all that bit. Well, we're five minutes in. Skip the first five minutes if you didn't want to hear that. Too late to tell you now. Anyway, this source book, if we go to the back page. Foes and Factions, Dossier from the Front. They say knowing your enemy and the battlefield before the fight can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Expand your knowledge of the Carbon Grey universe by adding the Foes and Factions within your game. This book is filled with world lore and even more stats for allies and foes. Now your favourite PCs can interact with characters made famous from the Carbon Grey graphic novel. Foes and Factions contains 14 iconic characters, 15 new NPC types, 4 new Axis powers, 14 locations of interest, an espionage mission generator, 8 new groups, factions and forces to add to your Carbon Grey RPG campaign. This book uses the D6MV magnetic variant of the classic West End Games D6 system and requires the Carbon Grey role-playing game Core Rulebook to play. It's got a barcode on the back, so it maybe will be printed out and sold as a physical copy. We shall see. Inside, the quality of publishing is absolutely lovely. The green marble effect on these reminds me a lot of the cover of the first edition uh, Vampire the Masquerade, something I've adored for a long time. Um, right through it, the artwork is really, really nice, as it was with the role-playing game. Uh, this is definitely one of the best presented role-playing games I've seen in a very long time. They're obviously using a lot of the artwork from the comics and the graphic novels, but it's really nicely done. They are using so much of it, at making it really visually, visually appealing. Um, dossiers from the front will open to the first expansion. Secrets of Marshall's journals. This chapter covers statistics and biographies of the iconic personalities that dominate the water on front. So we've got His Majesty Kaiser Hind von Meden. His stats and some background. We've got Marshall's journal covering the Kaiser. Then we've got Her Majesty Queen Alina Zakarin von Meden. Her stats. She looks like a sort of young elf chick, but as I said before, haven't got my physical copy of the graphic novel yet, leading, leaving reading it until I get that. Um, again, some background information, sort of story type stuff. We've got the High Lord Marshal, the Wolf General, stats and background, and then in sort of in universe kind of background story, the Adept Marshal, again, Mentor Goeth. Elliot Pepper, who looks like a mad scientist type. The least likely of heroes. His most recent cover identity was Axis Captain Kleinman. Baron von Stolberg. And as we're getting to more minor NPCs, it's getting shorter background and shorter in-universe stuff. The Lady Fermoy. The Sisters Grey. So we've got various characters here. All very useful if you're using the graphic novels and you're weaving your story into that. Um, the Great War on Many Fronts. The Powers That Be. So now we're going into the Axis powers. Ilvesia, Kerjak, Leon. Uh, talking about print journal journalism and propaganda. The Tural Empire. Various groups. Uh, second only to the Kaiser and the Queen, these groups guide the fate of all Middle Europa. The Middle European Cabal, the Sisters Grey, Schrottman at Leisure, Zokian Freeriders. They've got different forces within it. Again, absolutely lovely artwork. Really do like the presentation. And then we've got more generic NPCs. This is very much useful for the Games Master when he wants to dig out a rival sniper, heavy infantry, tankers, um, uh, rival leader purge officer, heavy purge officer, or heavy purge trooper, sorry. 
uh, head knuckle dragger, uh, solo rival enforcers, just lots of NPCs, very useful for your games master to dig out. Um, dead to rights, so undead characters, um, spiteful elite, manipulative nobles. And then finally, we've got an addendum episode hooks with roller d6, and it's got espionage missions there. It's a very short book. That's only 48 pages, including the cover and back cover and these sort of bank blank pages. But apart from that, it's generally worth its value. On Drive-Thru RPG, it's $10 at the moment. For core NPCs, if you are using the stories of the graphic novel and weaving your stuff around that, it'd be absolutely vital. If you just want some NPCs, then this book could still prove pretty useful, but it's pretty much up to you whether the $10 is going to be worth it. But it's a very nicely presented book. But anyway, I've whittled on for far too long as usual, so thank you very much for watching. And as always, most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.